great to see you here again. My name is Luke De Custer, founder of the Custer Academy, and we are talking about scheduling, crashing, and fast tracking. And we will be looking in this video to the critical path method. What is the critical path method about and how we use it in project management? But before we continue, don't forget to click the subscribe button, click the bell button so every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So let's have a look. What is the critical path method? Basically, the critical path method, or in short, CPM, was developed originally to improve production efficiency and cost reduction as a part of operations. It's very important to see in operations how we can improve the work we do, how we use scheduling, how we use the information, the precedence information of the different activities, and how we combine them in different workstations. Now, that's typically done in operations management, but project management, like we know it today, has a lot of use in operations management also, and is using a lot of tools that come from operations. Now, when we look at the critical path method, we typically have following steps. First of all, we have to identify all the activities that have to be completed. We create the WBS, the work breakdown structure, now remember, when we finish the work breakdown structure, the lowest level is the work package. Now work packages are mini projects that still have to be decomposed further up to the level of activities so that we can plan the work. And we have to find those activities. We have to estimate the duration of the activities and also their, in fact, link between them because we have to order them in a specific order. We have to then calculate the early start, early finish, late start and late finish of all activities and identify the longest path, which we call the critical path. Now, this is a calculation that can be done in different ways, and there are different ways, different methods to use the critical path method. Now, we look here at focusing on planning scheduling and controlling the critical activities, we look at those critical activities because these are the ones that are in fact determining the length of the project. And we try to find out how long will the project take. And we also want to know what is the flexibility we have. Once we finish the, this, we add milestones and deliverables related to those activities. Milestones can be external milestones where we have to comply with some business-related milestones, important points. We have to have finished a certain part so that the business can make decisions. But we also have milestones when we are creating the precedence diagram. We can say now we've finished this part of the project. We have reviews on those milestones, so it's very important to understand what those milestones are. Now, when we look at the critical path method, we can look back at its background. And originally, the critical path method was developed by the company Dupont in 1957. And it was basically a method to reduce costs in operations. And what they wanted to do, they wanted to avoid additional costs when they had to close down the factories to shut down and start up the production again. Shutting down a project uh, production and starting it up again is quite expensive. So they try to find a way how to optimize this, to reduce the shutdowns and of course the startups. Now they found a method which is now called the critical path method. And the method is based on fact focusing on performing the right tasks at the right time. And when they did that, they could save a lot of money. Dupont could save about 25% just by doing this. And that's an enormous amount when you look at all the costs that you have. And lower costs means higher profitability, better competitive value, and so on. Later, this method was also adopted to the construction business because the construction business was basically one of those businesses that was already using planning. And the disadvantage at the time 
was that the use of these methods in computer time was very, very expensive. Computers were not really available. They started to exist. We had some computers, but they were very large and computer time was very expensive. Nevertheless, when the personal computer was introduced, this changed the availability of these programs. Now, when you look back, you look at the early computers. I remember in 1977, they started to have computers. One of the first computers I used was a pet Commodore, Commodore, which was known later for gaming computers. IBM came with the PC and then, yes, you could review the history. For many of you, this is very long time ago. For me, it was really what happened, the exciting time of all those computers that we could use to do a lot of calculations that were not available before. Now, when we look at the critical path method, we have, in fact, two methods of scheduling that we can use. Originally, the CPM was developed to use with the arrow diagramming method, which is an activity on the arrow method. But we can also use the principle on the precedence diagramming method. Arrow diagramming and precedence diagramming methods occurred, some say, at the same time. Some people had preference for the ADM or for the PDM. It depended a little bit on the personal preference. The first programs, anyway, were written with the ADM, the arrow diagramming method, in mind. Now, when we look at the arrow diagramming method, we look at arrows that represent the activities. They start in a node and finish in another node. So there is a start and a finish node for every activity, and we can consider them to be milestones for that activity, the start milestone of the activity and the finish milestone activity. Now, this method is event-based, so we look at the start and the finish times. We look at a calculation where we start at time zero or moment zero. The PDM, on the other hand, was developed rather in parallel. Uh, it became more dominant today. We are using more the precedence diagramming method, although you can still find the ADM methods. Now, here we have a different way of representing the activities. The activities are representing in a node, a node that contains all the information like duration, uh, description, cost, and so on. And it's easy to calculate on that node, the early start, early finish, late start, late finish, and the slack. Now, when calculating the precedence diagramming uh, method, we start typically from one. We look at a calendar and an activity starts at eight o'clock in the morning, finishes at five o'clock in the evening. So that's the first day. So we're using ordinal numbers here. The ADM method was typically using the coordinates. Now, the starting point zero from zero to one is in fact the same as the first period or the first day for the precedence diagramming method. We can also do the calculations for the precedence diagramming method starting from zero. It depends uh, what you want. Both provide you the same information. And basically, when we look at the PDM, when we start from zero, it has certain advantages when we look further into the different possibilities, which is the PERT, the PERT method. Now, the PERT and the critical path method are also linked. PERT means the program evaluation and review technique. It's a similar method to determine the sequence of the activities and determine the critical activities or the critical path. It was typically developed by the Department of Defense in the United States as part of the Polaris project. Polaris were the nuclear submarine-based missiles that were developed at that time, during the time of the Cold War. Now, the CPM method classically uses fixed duration. Typically, it's based on production information, but the PERT information in PERT, we look at the durations that are variable. We have an uh, optimistic duration, we have a pessimistic duration, we have a probable duration, 
And based on that, we can calculate using the PERT or the three-point formulas the duration with 50% probability. So we have a prob duration with 50% probability that the activity will finish earlier, but also 50% probability that it will finish later. But we can also determine a standard deviation so we can have a better expectation. For example, we can estimate what's the probab or the duration which complies with a probability of 80% of completion. Today we still talk about the PERT method, but basically we don't use it. Uh, we, call, we call it the PERT diagram, but it can be used for an arrow diagram or for a precedence diagram. Now, when we look at the PERT method or the PERT diagram, the end result of this calculation was an expected duration of the project and a standard deviation. So it became very interesting to introduce uncertainty in the estimation of the duration of a project. Let's say we have a critical path. We can calculate the expected duration of the critical path, which has a probability of 50%. We can also calculate the standard deviation of that critical path. And based on that, we could say, for example, well, the expected duration plus one standard deviation, well, there is an 84% probability that the project will finish in a time less than the average plus one standard deviation. And that gave a lot more information about the project. It has proven very um, optimal. It gave better results. And the PERT method still lives further, where a lot of people are still talking about PERT. The PERT formula was later simplified in what I call the three point formulas. We will talk about that later. Basically, it's a different calculation formula, but the final result is exactly the same. We have an average and a standard deviation. So that was the introduction about the precedence diagramming method, the critical path method, the arrow diagramming method, and PERT. And before we leave, before you finish this video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. I thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye.